Hello, everybody, and this is Stacey Chalemi from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very, very special guest today. We have Rich Cruz, and he is an organizational developmental consultant, and he is one of the owners for Harmonious Workplace, and his motto is make change your friend, and he's going to show you how to make change your friend, and he's going to explain to you exactly what he means and how that could actually benefit your life in so many areas of your life. So, Rich, it is an honor to have you on the show. I am so happy that you're here today. Tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Oh, sure. Oh, thanks, Stacy. This is just a treat to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I mean, where I am now, I'm, I'm an organizational development consultant, right? So I work with businesses to help them to uh, succeed with the people that they have there, right? Because it's the people from a human capital perspective, you know, uh, they are the ones who deliver value to organizations, right? And if you have uh, like the the Gallup um, global workplace workplace polls, right, that they put out every year, only twenty three percent of employees are actually actively engaged at work, right? So we've got this problem that's that's uh, it's an age old problem, but it's especially something that that has come to the forefront of of today's culture. So. That's what we set out to do um, is to is to kind of help companies to address, well, first of all, face up to what's happening, right? So bring that up and and actually show the uh, from from a scientific kind of background, right? For using an analysis to show them from the data, this is what's actually happening, and then use some of um some of the principles that evidence has shown, some research has shown to help them through this right and and navigate some organizational and cultural changes to bring about better business i feel like it's really hard for you know today's society like we were talking right before the show the number one thing you hear in businesses is that you know um employees are you know feel fearful of their of their bosses the bosses are you know um they're supposed to be mentors and some some of them come off you know because the the way they've done their businesses all their life they come off more as a boss than they do a mentor and then you know you have miscommunication going on and it's so you know and then bosses will explain that you know it's very hard to keep good employees and it's very hard to find good employees so there's a lot of different things going on you know in these workplaces but what are some of the common problems that you find when you when you speak to different organizations and companies and businesses you know what are some of the um the, the most common problems and maybe some of the solutions that are simple simple solutions that you could kind of breeze over today yeah yeah for sure and that's exactly it it's just going to be a breeze over <laughs> yeah. so we're not going to solve problems here right yeah, but yeah. but but the reality is um yeah, so I've I've been to several different events for different industries. So I belong to different industry groups. Um, specifically, was at a manufacturing operations roundtable event, yeah. and we've had several people within this org within this uh, association that were talking about. We have a an older group of of workers who have all the knowledge skills abilities and other characteristics that are driving business right now right so ksao's knowledge skills abilities and other characteristics right they 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 hold all of this but they are ready to retire and they are really like counting down the days right there's a yeah. ton of institutional knowledge here that they are risking losing right and then and then you have this group of new talent coming in right first of all it's hard to, to attract that talent coming in because there's there's other opportunities and uh so you really have to make sure that you have a solid culture and a good reputation right yeah things like Glassdoor and indeed can like damage a company's reputation and people just gloss over them and say i'm not even going to bother applying right but then there's yeah. there's other um, aspects right uh from a from a branding standpoint that that uh culture really plays into um and so even when they bring in this new talent the new yes. talent isn't necessarily engaged right and they feel like they are um they don't feel welcome they don't feel necessarily safe right and 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 
they're like, oh, I'm going to learn this. And then I, you know, what are they going to forget about me? Right. You know, so there's a, there's a lot of that going on. And what I see on this is you have some really great opportunities within, and it's not just me. So I, I you know, Harmonious Workplaces, it's me, it's uh, Cheryl Volpe, who is, uh, she's my associate from, we, we both graduated from Purdue last year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with with degrees in uh, IO psychology, industrial organizational psychology, and Ben Kleinman, um, and uh, and Ben is a Chicago change uh, change management professional, and mm -hmm. so you know what we what we see here is you have you have this generation that should be at a stage in their life. So if there's a there's a model Erickson's model of um, development that says when you're at you know this age of was it between 40 and 65 or somewhere about that don't quote me on that that age group exactly but around there we have generativity versus stagnation so generativity is where we want to pass down this information it's yeah. like we're we're wired for that culturally throughout the ages you 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 know that you have the the elders passing down the the generation not to say that we're old <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is that you know yeah. we're we're wired to want to do that, and yet yeah. we have we have right now Gen Xers and baby boomers who are holding on to that with fear of them losing their position, losing their job, losing whatever power they might have, right? Yeah. Uh, particularly as they are coming towards retirement age, because yeah. they 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 want to keep their benefits and and you know full full um retirement plans and all that stuff right and then you have this other group right the 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 gen z's and the millennials who are in the stage of life where they are looking for intimacy versus isolation right so they're looking for their tribe right yes. they're looking for the they're looking for the in groups the 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 people that and the places that they can call home right but when you have this where I don't want to share, you know, and we're thirsty for knowledge and we really want to get to work. Right. And, 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 and we have, you know, some of the, some of the, the uh, stereotypes out there are, Oh, the Gen Z's and millennials, they don't want to work or they don't want to do that. And that's not the, that's not the case. You know, right. I, I teach uh, as an adjunct over here at uh, Trinity Christian college Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, we 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 want to learn. We're we're hungry to get in the workforce, and we really want to do this. But yeah. we also need to feel like we're supported, right? Yeah. So perceived organizational support is very very important. And I, we as consultants, we come in and we really try to help you know bridge that because and and use some of the data um, collected from interviews and and all that you know to help. Uh, businesses to understand that and help them to navigate some of the cultural changes that they need to be making to make right. a more learning cult, more of a learning culture. Um, yeah. You know, so that's, that's, that's really, you know, uh, a driving force for us. Have you, have you seen, is it hard for a lot of um, people who are in charge to change their way of doing things? Cause I find that it seems like, a lot of times, you know, they're stuck in the way of, of doing things that because they've been so consistent for for over a decade, you know, doing things a certain way that a lot of people, a lot of older people, you know, don't realize or they might realize that the world is changing, but they don't realize within their own, you know, business, you know, or their own company, how different things need to be done. Because right. what worked even a couple of years ago before COVID, you know, it is, does not, it is completely different now. Completely different. Absolutely. Yeah. So there's a lot of resistance that happens uh, with change. And actually it's, it's interesting. There are some, um, I was in a group not too long ago of organizational development professionals that said, you know, change resistance is a myth. I'm, I'm still like, Oh, really? I, <laughs> Yeah, I want to, I want to learn more, uh, but I, I I don't know the answer to that one. What I have seen is that um, yeah, you have people with that that do have you know resistance to change. Um, there are some different models here, you know, from a research perspective. Um, 
where people, you know, in that beginning part of state of, of change, right, the, which is the the ending of the status quo, it's the ending of what is there and letting go of maybe something that the owner built or something that, you know, the, it, it feels like a warm blanket for us to do this process. Right. Uh, you know, and, and so when we say, oh, we're going to change that because that's no longer working for us right now, or, or maybe even we're going to modify that. So it's, it's still a change and we're not getting rid of it completely, but we're modifying this process or whatever. They have some concerns, right. And, and that could be fear, that can be um, honestly anger. <laughs> you know, there's there's lots of different emotions that come with that, and and it's literally, um, you know, there there are stages of guilt uh, or, or of uh, like well, there's some guilt in there too, but uh, of grief, right? That that come out of this because people are literally letting go of something that is no longer going to be there anymore, and then they move into this kind of neutral zone where you know, they, they feel regret. Like they're like, Oh, what did I do? Like I'm going through this and I, right, can we go back? And yeah. you see, and you see some of that backslide that happens. Right. Um, and this is where we need to be able to have some buy-in from above. Right. For sure. But we yes. also need to garner support throughout the rest of the, the organization because we need to be social when it comes to these changes. We all need to, participate and support each other right and it's oh, yeah. it's when we have that type of thing happening that we have successful change um and and part of that is having a feedback loop that allows people to express how they feel mm -hmm. what's going on with them um and listen to their ideas yeah. and make decisions based on that where they're involved in those processes because when we don't do that they're they're confused. They've got questions. They're again. They're fearful. They don't want to move into that. But if we yeah. do this, where we allow that, then they start moving into the new beginning. They're making gains. Acceptance starts to come through. We have a, you know adoption, and the whole idea here is you know can we get the 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 late adopters and the laggards you know at the end of of the change yeah. to to really fully embrace this and, and move into what could and should be part of the organizational culture. I think it's so important to have be able to have that feedback. A lot of people have a hard time with constructive criticism and and, and you really have to be open-minded and listen to other people's feedback because you know that's what really helps build you know, a, a good business, because a lot of times, you know, we might not see things, you know, the way other people see things. And I think that's a huge thing, you know, Absolutely. What, we, what we like and what we think is good may not be good to a lot of people's eyes, you know, and, and, and it's our job, I think, to try to be open minded and to accept that constructive feedback. And a lot of people have a hard time, you know, because, you know, especially people who are fearful of change, they, you know, take a lot of people take, you know, constructive criticism as a strike against them, you right. know, and they get defensive. So, you know, is there a specific way that people can give feedback so you avoid that that conflict or you, you don't offend them? Because you see that a lot, like, you know. So I have I have a mentor, um, Alan Landers, uh, Landers Consulting Group. He is the um, he's the trainer for the Drucker School of Management, where I received my certification in, in OD, Organizational Development and Change Leadership. Mm -hmm. And Alan is famous for saying that um, change leaders need to wear their tomato suit. Now, what I mean by that is in, in vaudeville, right? you had you would if you were a comedian or you know a juggler or whatever you would get up there right and you had to be resilient you because and you weren't wearing your sunday best on stage because yeah. you might get pelted with with some uh you know tomatoes right so he said yeah. you've got to you've got to do that so it's 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 tough I'm not gonna. It, 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 I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it can it can be really tough for a change leader, and that change leader doesn't necessarily have to be like an executive. Like it can be somebody in the middle in middle yeah. management or a line worker, right? You know, um, but they have to have some resilience 
right? And and come in with the ability to um, take the blows, right? The the the, the verbal, you know, um, assaults that may happen, right? Not yeah. take it personally. Um, you know, actually, I I. Uh, I, I do listen to like Mel Robbins, you know, and she, she sometimes has this, you know, where you put your hand on your heart yeah. and you take some breaths and you say, um, you know, I'm safe. Mm -hmm. I'm loved. Right. Um, I'm okay. Right. So have, having those, those moments of taking a breath, taking, taking that feedback, taking a breath and taking the ego out of it right yeah. um is is very important there's a another author that i i read uh, ryan holiday who, who writes about the stoics so it, it, he has a series on stoicism but he has one that's called ego is the enemy right yeah. and and i think that's i think that's so important to uh there's a there's a lot of lessons throughout history of different uh leaders who have well he illustrates both both things right the, the ones who have egos right and and the results yeah. of that and then the ones who let go of that and really you know they, they they they're able to lead by example and people want to follow them because they have you know they they they're showing that some vulnerability and they're they're um also showing a receptiveness to how people feel you know so that empathy is a big thing i think Oh yeah, I definitely think so. And you you mentioned something that you know ego. You know that's a, a huge thing that a lot of people have this ego on their shoulder, and you know they don't know how to let go of that ego, and that could destroy you know a business in itself. When you you have such a big ego, you know you don't see the the flaws within you. You only see the flaws we know around everybody else and you don't, you know, accept change very well and you want everything done your way and you only see the greatness in yourself and you're not sure. seeing others, you know? So what's the best way of ha having someone to acknowledge that they have an ego and having that person learn how to drop that ego a few notches so they can be on the same level as everyone else. Is this a three hour long podcast or <laughs> boy that that's that's a big one right i mean it, it, it's that that's a that's a tough that's a tough scenario right um again if you can if you can leverage some some data right and when i talk about data i don't just mean numbers right, right. i mean so there's qualitative data and there's quantitative data so when yeah. you can have those interviews with, you know, line workers, middle managers, you know, and and get some of that 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 feedback, and and it, the, one of the hard parts about a consultant coming in and asking some of those is that we don't yeah. want to we don't want to provide leading questions either, like you know, oh, tell me how bad your boss is. That's you know that doesn't work, right? Yeah. But there are some instruments that. Um, you'll allow us to assess how people are feeling and we can kind of gauge, does this mean that, you know, they're, that, do they have trust in that leadership? Do they see that people have, you know, yeah. um, an, a, a, an overinflated ego, like for lack of a better word, I don't, I don't like to use that, that one, but, you know, it, and then when we can point out that, Hey, maybe we need to think about this, you know, again, we have to wear a tomato soup because that's not well received oftentimes, right? Yeah. Um, but we can work through that, right? And it may not be like I'm not, I'm not a, I am in no way, shape, or form a therapist or a counselor or you know a trained professional on that front. Um, so that could be something that they could work with. But I can coach and help them to, you know answer some of the questions themselves right so if you ask if you ask some clarifying questions it may be able to help them to identify with you know with what that is and and maybe not you know <laughs> it depends you know that that's that's the old that's the old industrial organizational psychology motto is it depends <laughs> yeah <laughs>
When you when you are working with a group of people and you're consulting them and you're helping them try to, you know, grasp everybody to understand everybody and to learn how to communicate well with one another. So you have a productive business going on. Mm -hmm. Is it do you find that, you know, change is, is difficult for many people? You know, it, it's an easy word to say, but for, for many people, it's very it's very scary. It's very hard. Um, and, and people not always adapt to change very well. You sure. know, are, are there some suggestions that you, you know, that you um, would like to share that you feel, you know, that would help people when it comes to change? Because I'm sure you go into different work environments and when you start talking about different ways of doing things, you know, you'll have the people who are really, you know, looking at you, observing and, and absorbing everything you say. And then you have people that are fiddling with their fingers because they're nervous and, you know, change is not their forte, you yeah. know. So, you know, what are some suggestions about change, you know, because change is a very scary word and it's very hard for some. Yeah, um, that's a great question. I, I, I actually kind of think that you have to think like a marketer in some ways, right? You have to know your audience. There's going to be different personas of people that are on your staff. So understanding who your audience is, how they communicate, maybe what their communication styles are, right? Yeah. Based based on, um, you know, how they work, maybe even some assessments um, that, that can help with that. Um, yeah. It allows you to craft a message. I mean, ultimately, mm -hmm. people need to know what's in it for them. Yeah. Right. I mean, really, ultimately, is it is it going to benefit me? Is it going to hurt me? Is it neither of those? You know, um, so that there, there is some, you know, being able to address that part of it that I think is is very, very important. Um, and then the different types of styles of communication that we use, whether it's channels, you know, is it is it emails? Is it one to one meetings? Is it group meetings? Um, you know, is it, is it a phone call? Is it a one-to-one, -one, you know, there's different levels of richness that we yeah. get when we're talking with people, you know, so, um, a, a, you know, a group in-person meeting is going to have a different vibe and flavor for people, uh, and they're, they're going to resonate worse or better than maybe if you have a one-on-one -on -one on Zoom or on a phone call or something like that, right? So you have to be able to kind of meet them where they're at to some extent, yeah. I think, you know? And uh, and again, if you can explain the vision. So um, John Cotter, who wrote the book Leading Change 1996, I think. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I read it back in 2003 or 2004 when I got my MBA. Um, and it still sticks with me because we're dealing with this, the same stuff and it and and the 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 eight stage framework still works where he talks about you know create a vision right we yeah. we need we need a vision we need a then we need a, a coalition of support you know that that guide that vision you know so I, I think that we need to be very very crystal clear on this is what we're doing and this is why we're doing it. So that, that whole Simon Sinek start with why is also a very important part of all this. Yeah, no, I, I agree completely. I think people have to understand the why, you know, why are we doing this? The importance of it, you know, and, and, you know, I always believe failure, you, you, you don't, if you try, there is no such thing as failure. You may not reach the goal that you intended, but, you gave it the effort that, it, you know, and as long as you give effort and you try to achieve that goal, you know, the, just the trying part, it, you know, shows that I don't, I don't believe that it, it's failure. You just may not have reached that ultimate goal that you were setting for, but you just keep trying and keep trying. And I think the more we try, the better we get and the further we'll, we'll advance to. Yeah. I love that. You, you, you said that in, uh, in the uh, January podcast about uh, goal setting. Uh, and that's right. That you're, you're, you're spot on. You know, I was, I, when I heard that, I'm like, write that down. <laughs> so, very good. Yeah. Yeah.
I, I love it. I, I think it's so important, you know, it's for, it's for people to, to learn how to change because so many people can get so stressed in the workforce. And when you're so, so stressed, that's when so many things start to occur. You know, people get stressed, they get irritable, they can't communicate with the other people they're working with. They might snip at the other people, you know, and it's very hard to, to work like with harmonious balance, you know, that's right. It, if you are in a in a setting where people are stressed and they are not, you know, you know, they, you know everybody is, is under the pressure, under the gun, and because the communication might not be, you know, really, you know, one hundred percent, because they're not making the changes they're supposed to, which could lead back to the communication or whatever the problem may stem from, you know, that 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 ability to to be able to you know, under, you know, understand what is the root cause of that stress in that environment, and then making those changes to, to overcome those stresses, you know, just making a list of what we can do and how, how to do them, which is something I'm sure you, you do with as a consultant can really, you know, help a business, you know, go from just surviving to thriving. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And what I, th I think what's, What's really helpful is, you know, there, there's there's not just like one framework that you can use. There, there are there are different frameworks, but but no matter what, I think if you can use some kind of a framework and work, uh, you know, work through that, um, because there's there's evidence that supports that this framework has worked for others in the past, right? And so I think that that's that's one thing that organizations, you know, if they try to do this on their own um without um because there there are internal consultants that can do this type of stuff too you know if they if they if they know they have the skills you know your human right. resources department often has people who are trained in this type of thing too you know um, project managers have some training in that as well but um so when i talk about consultant like it can be an internal or an external you know um a person or group of people but um yeah I, I I think if you if you work within some kind of a system or framework you're going to have much more success than trying to you know fly by the seat of your pants you know don't let the data talk and just go hey I'm just you know I think we should do this you know I I, I think I think we could be much smarter about how we make decisions by leveraging those frameworks, leveraging some of the 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 you know past research, but also the institutional knowledge that we have, like you know, ask those people that are around you, you know, what do you think? How do you think we should move forward? Right. If you had to like simplify some of the the steps people need to take to have harmonious balances in their workforce, what are some of the things that you would like to share that you know is really important things in the in the workforce that needs to be established in order to have that harmonious balance? Again, you can go. You don't need to give a detailed three hour answer. You could just. <laughs> I'll try to be brief. <laughs> <laughs> the first one I think is um, make change your friend. You know, we say we we end our podcast at the Harmonious Workplaces podcast with make change your friends. So I think that's one thing. Um, the second thing is uh, keep moving forward. Uh, that, that, that has stuck with me ever since I watched uh, meet the Robinsons with my kids. <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah, I think that was, I don't know, 2007 or eight or something like that, you know, but I, I, I think that that is super important to don't give up, keep moving forward. Um and the other thing is, uh, um, you know, leveraging uh, co uh, communication, right? Knowing your audience, tailoring your con your communication channels and your style to your audience. And the last part, which is what I kind of wrote my my capstone on um, at Purdue, was um, training and development. You know, so having a learning culture. You know, I, I'm going to go back to when we first started this, you know, when, when you have, you know, the, 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 the people who are holding all the knowledge right now, right. And they're yeah. afraid to, sh to share it. If you can do like a train the trainer program or, and, and, and then you're providing training on this end. So you're, you're training everybody and, and they're, and it's not just like training for training's sake, but it's actually helping people to grow um, yeah. when they're actually like when they have a new 
skill that they can put into place. And you can reinforce that skill with on the job, um, on the job training, coaching, rewards, right? That type of stuff, which is again, evidence-based, uh, the Kirkpatrick mo new model of training, you know, supports that, right? Um, I think you, that, that learning culture is going to give people, uh, that, that growth mindset mm -hmm. that, that we've, that we've read about, um, and, 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 and keep them, uh, wanting to continue to make new goals, new, new, you know, reach new challenges and, and, and keep, and keep the flywheel going, you know, so. Did that yeah. Help? Oh yeah, no, that helped. Yeah, Great. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really important that you know that uh, companies really bring in coaches and bring in consultants and, and bring people to really show people different ways of approaching situations and different ways of making change your friend. You know, and because it, when when if you have a company that is just either just make just plateauing or if you have a company that's just you know, just surviving or even a company that is doing well, but has a lot of stress going on, you know, having, having a coach and having, having consultants come in and really showing people a different way of approaching things and different ways of really uh, doing things in a more constructive way that would actually ease their life instead of making it as complicated as it may be at that moment, mm -hmm. I think really, really help many many companies and businesses in our, in our united states for sure absolutely i agree i'm glad we see that eye on that <laughs> <laughs> now let's now let's make more people <laughs> perfect yeah now if you had to take today's situation like that we talked about all the conversation that we had what are some important aspects that you really like to focus on that you'd really like the, to emphasize on for the listeners that you think are important aspects that they really need to really understand when it comes to harmonious balance and when it comes to making change your friend and, and why it's so important you know that was like the main thing that we were talking about today what are yeah. some things you'd like to emphasize on um, I think I think one of the things I want to emphasize is taking a look at your corporate culture um, and along with that, working within some frameworks, right? Because I think there are some really great corporate culture um, uh, systems that are out there. Um, I, I am personally am not an EOS practitioner, but I but I'm going to I'm going to use that as a reference because um that entrepreneurial ex, uh, operating system uh which is developed by mark winters uh from their from his book rocket fuel um and gina wickman sorry uh so their 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 book rocket, rocket fuel and traction it pro they it provides a system for business owners to include their um their team set goals based on strategies right so i, I think working within working within a system and developing a culture that fosters open communication, fosters learning, um, and has psychological safety. So um, just a little, can I, can I give a shameless plug for a second? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, all right, cool. All right. So uh, if you go to our website, so we have harmoniousworkplaces.com, but that is a subsidiary of work balance consulting. So if you go to workbalanceconsulting.com, you will find a culture scorecard so you can go there fill out the scorecard it's very quick you'll get an email response with a, with a, a, a you know kind of a decoder ring i guess you could call it <laughs> you know but but it'll tell you you know based on your score here's here's where we, we we think you're at and we're happy to you know, have a discussion about you know what what those results are um we also have a white paper that my partner cheryl uh wrote which is on psychological safety that you'll find out there um, on, on our website. And again, that's uh, www.workbalanceconsulting.com. Um, uh, there you go. Um, you can also uh, go to our website at, um, so we have a blog and a podcast at um, harmoniousworkplaces.com um, where you know we, we put out pretty much weekly or eh, maybe more than that now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh mm -hmm. blogs and okay. then uh and then we we do a we do a weekly podcast on largely organizational culture 
um, organizational change management and uh, organizational development. I think that's amazing. Now, what are, you know, you talked about some of the things that you have on your website, like what are some of the services that you provide for others? Yeah. Um, so we come in with, a, so we start with assessing, right? Um, then we come in and we have an amend step there, which is developing the plan for a, how do we, how do we move from, um, you know, what we're assessing and analyzing, right? To that amend part. And then, uh, and then we have an execution stage, right? And that, that execution stage is, uh, where we're helping to implement those changes and foster that through. But we really, really, you know, I can't stress this enough. We need to rely on the organization to, yes. um, you know, carry this, this through, right? Because our, our, our ultimate goal is we'll help you get the flywheel going. We're here for support, but this is your, this is, this is your culture. And that's going to, you know, whether people come in or out of the organization, Yes. You're going to be able to maintain that. That's yeah. that's our goal to systemize systemize it. Have people feel like they want to work there. Have people feel like they're part of 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 an engaged and harmonious workplace. Right. Right. Um, yeah. No, it's so important. It you know because you really need that harmonious workplace environment if you're going to thrive. If you're going to do well. If you're going to have happy employees that are going to want to give you 300% and not like constantly look at the time clock and just want to get out of there because they just don't feel in in a good place of mind. They feel stressed, they feel overworked, they feel like they're not they're not valued and all this other stuff that, you know, that they won't come out and tell the bosses, but they'll talk to their coworkers and and then, you know, the messages eventually mm -hmm. get to the top if they get to the top. A lot of times they don't get to the top, you That's know. That's true. That's true. And you don't want to wait till it's too late and you start you start losing those great employees that you that were really you know, valued and, and really did a lot for the company. So it's, it's really important to, to, you know, have that assessment, but I, you know, what you said is so important. You can give all the advice, you can give the structures, you can give them the framework, but it's up to the business to implement it and to do it on a daily basis. You know, right. some, some people will do it for the, the first couple of months and then they go back into their old routines. You have to, you have to make these, 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 these new ways of, of doing things, these new changes, part of your work life, you know, and, and it just has to be, become the natural new routine, you know, yeah. that, that change, you know, that, and, and it's no, it's, it's a change, but now it's, 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 it's a normal routine that you just right. continue to implement on a daily basis. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. We can, you know, as, as consultants, we can come in, we can help to, evaluate and so there's uh, edgar shine's model of culture which is a three-step model it, sometimes it's like a, a pyramid sometimes it's a iceberg yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, right underneath you have assumptions right so we can help to um, identify you know those assumptions and that part of the the corporate culture and really you know define and then figure out what needs to change in here there's yeah. the values which should be guiding how you know, from, from soup to nuts, how the organization operates, right? So there's that values part there. And then there's the artifacts part. That's the behaviors and the outward signs that everybody sees. Um, and that's that's a component that once you, you need to get the assumptions and the values aligned to make yeah. that part um, where it's where it's the visible part of this is how we do things, you know, and this is how... The, 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 these are the values that we espouse, right? And and here's how we show it. And and it's through how we handle customer service, how we manage quality, how we do, you know, any any of those, any of those, you know, business related um, things that we do, you know, in sales, operations, marketing, all of that, you know, um, it's all going to stem from that. But that's, you know, we, we kind of come in and help to, to, to do that type of stuff, you know, um, and, and it could be on a micro level. <laughs> we just need to do these little changes or it can be on a macro level, you know. Uh, so it's not, everything's not a, not, not a, as my friend uh, Ben says, it's not always a tire fire, you know, that we're, that we're trying to extinguish. But, um, you know, can can we help with the tire fire? Sure. But, you know, we're, we're, we're hoping that it's more of a smoldering flame that we can 
<laughs> you help to control. And it's funny because I've seen, you know, before we go, I, I've seen many companies just have small little tweaks that need to be made. And once those tweaks were made in their in their structure of their business, they just start to thrive. Yeah. And it was just, you know, they just needed a small couple little tweaks here and there that they were lacking and they needed to see where they were and they needed to learn how to fix it. And as soon as that was done, it was like a whole new business. It was just, it just took off. And it was just by just by changing a few little aspects in the business. And That's it's pretty right. amazing. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Doesn't does does not have to be a completely transformative experience. It can be. Sometimes <laughs> it's needed. But it doesn't have to be, you know. Exactly. <laughs> Don't freak out again, make change your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got to tell you, this has been great. Before we go, is there anything else that you'd like to share? Anything that you comes to mind that you'd like to get across? Um, the, the only thing I can think of is, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This was this was just a treat and a pleasure to be here. And uh, you know, if I could just say again, uh, harmoniousworkplaces.com, tune into us, um, and. Uh, We'll steer you over to the the culture scorecard and the uh, the white paper. I love it. This has been amazing, Rich. I thank you so much for coming on this show. This is such a great topic to talk about. And it's such an important topic because so many businesses need it. And it's it could be, you know, with the right structure, with the right guidance, it, you know, it changes could just, you know, people could just flourish. Their businesses can flourish. And in the, today's economy, that's what we need. We need businesses that are flourishing and, you know, you know, small to medium size to large corporations corporations we need them all to flourish so people like you make a huge difference in in today's business you know industry so i'd like to thank you so much for coming on the show and just talking about a small aspect that that means so much to every business thank I you agree. yeah I, I just one quick thing because you, you you hit the nail on the head there stacy uh that you there's there's two two parts to why we're doing this type of work right one is i was a business owner and uh, an employer, right? So I know, I know the importance of that. I know the importance also of having a thriving economy based on small business, um, small, medium, even large. But right, mm -hmm. then, but but I think that that's that's super huge. Um, and the second thing is that um, I have seen what it does to people when they don't have a good career, right? Yeah. And we want to make more harmonious workplaces so that people have good careers. They're paid yes. well. They can they can achieve their dreams. They're doing what they're they're doing with their themselves, their families. They're they're achieving their goals, right? Because yes. um, when you have the business owners that are doing well, and you have the employees that are doing well, again, you've got harmonious workplaces, and subsequently communities that are thriving, and we're, we're you know we're doing well, and we're everybody's lifting everybody else up. Yes, and that's so important. That's so important. Well, Rich, this has been amazing. I, I'd like to thank you once again. I thank you already about five times, but I'm going to thank you once again. <laughs> thank <laughs> this you. Has been great. This has been great. I really appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing. And I thank you so much for coming on the show to explain this and to explain, you know, about change and some of the strategies that go behind it and how it doesn't have to be so strenuous, you know, that with little change, you know, and just to, in taking baby steps, huge changes can come about. Absolutely. Well, awesome. Thanks so much. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have a great day. You too. Take care.